Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And it is a pleasure to follow on from the member for Torbay, who made many powerful points. Firstly, can I commend my right honourable friend, the member for Chesham and Amersham, for securing this important debate ahead of World Autism Week, and also thank my honourable friend, the member for Bexhill and Battle, for his outstanding representation of her in this chamber today. I would also like to commend the All-Party Parliamentary Group report, written in partnership with the National Autistic Society, Autism and Education 2017. Madam Deputy Speaker, at this point I would like to make clear my position as a member of the Education Select Committee, as we are also looking into the needs of children and young people with special educational needs and disabilities. The Autism APPG's report made for some shocking statistics. But the one that really upset me was that fewer than half of the children and young people going to school say that they're happy on the autism spectrum. It goes on to say that a lack of understanding from their peers and their teachers is the main reason for such unhappiness. And the thought of any child or young person not looking forward to their day at school is to me so incredibly sad and utterly avoidable with better understanding and a coordinated, resourced approach. I will give way. Thank you. I don't take that much of the House's time, but it has um, the Honourable Member had a chance to meet my constituent, Deborah Brownson, and the extraordinary um, facilities that she has created through the online autism plan to help parents and children facing difficulties. And if she hasn't, she should, and, and join in the campaign to get government support for what she's doing. I thank the Honourable Member from Barrow and Furness, and I have not, but I would absolutely look forward to doing that. So can I task him with the job of connecting us both, and we will we'll do that together. Um, with almost immediate effect after being elected into this House two years ago, the calls for my assistance arrived from families living with autism. They have told me about living with the daily fight for support, for a diagnosis, for professional advice, for an education and healthcare plan, for the necessary resources to actually carry out the recommendations within the plan, for reasonable adjustments in school, for flexible working arrangements with parents' employers. As one of many parents who responded to my call for information ahead of this debate said, everything is a fight. To get help is a fight. And to find anything that you are entitled to is a fight. And each family I met with said the same thing over and over and over again. <coughs> Families talk of the agonising wait for a diagnosis in the hope that a diagnosis will bring some certainty and a joined-up forward plan, but all too often it does not. The fact that we in Copeland live in a rural and remote community, it may be expected that self-sustaining groups have formed to support each other. It's what we do. Groups like Shine for Autism, Autism Around the Coombe, the West Cumbrian Autism Society and the award-winning Sellafield Site Autism Support Network have formed out of absolute desperation and also in recognition that there are so many people living with autism that these groups could make a real difference. And they really are. I would like to pay tribute to all the volunteers and parents who selflessly support others. <coughs> The resilience and concept of helping each other is what makes me so incredibly proud of my community, but really it's not fair or right or sustainable in the long term because the parents I speak to, and I quote, are at the end of their tether. This fight is resulting in relationship breakdowns and mental ill health conditions, in parents having to reduce their hours or having to give up work altogether because of the lack of childcare for families with autistic children. Autistic children are three times more likely to be excluded from school for a fixed period than children who do, do not have any special educational needs. And with just 16% of autistic adults in full-time work, the UK is missing out on talent and much-needed skills for the future. CAMS came up time and time again as being a critical but under-resourced source of help in Copeland and across Cumbria. Too many children and young people are being left without education, without mental health support and without any reassurance of a plan for their future. 
Madam Deputy Speaker, the member for Cheshire and Amersham introduced the bill that became the Autism Act in 2009, and ten years on, it is, there are, it is recognised that the calls for training of school staff, the re reasonable adjustments in schools, and guidance and resources for local authorities to provide the full range of educational provision and support. I am delighted that the Academy for Autism will be opening in West Cumbria in September, yeah, yeah. and also that the outstanding Whitehaven Mayfield Specialist School will move into its brand new facility later this year too. The DfE has increased the total high needs budget across England from 5 billion to just under 6 billion in 2018, with funding set to rise above 6 billion in 2019 to 2020. There has been much progress, but I would urge the Minister to consider a different approach in rural and remote areas, as we are missing out, our children are missing out, and the country will miss out on the abundance of talent and skills which are so desperately needed. So my call to the Ministry is please help me to find a way to better help the dedicated groups in the vital work that they do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah.